Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Urban Survival Gear TIE Scribe Go. First off though, before I go any further, I gotta let you know that this guy was provided to me by the maker himself. Kelvin uh, over at Urban Survival Gear reached out to me, said, hey Nick, got something new in the pipe, you wanna check it out? I said, absolutely, I know their stuff, they tend to do great work, and so I was happy to do that. But I told him, as always, I'm gonna talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. Nonetheless, he sent it along. We do have to assume this is the very, very best quality control one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. Uh, first off, actually, I'll compare it against the last generation uh, TIE Scribe Bolt. This is the V3. I don't know if this is a new generation or a new model, whatever. But anyways, this is the mini size of this guy. Um, there is a full size one, which is going to be much more akin to, uh, oh, actually, uh, much more akin to this guy in size, maybe a little bit uh, shorter on this dimension. But nonetheless, this is the, uh, the, the TIE Scribe scribe bolt before that and then here is a full size uh tie scribe bolt uh bolt that is uh, version number two uh and then here it is against some of the classics for the channel for size comparison here it is against a pocket jotter uh which is a uh well it's a great pen and this also takes a pocket refill so that's even more relevant uh let's go ahead and put it up against a uh tactile turn uh clicky uh pen so what we see here is uh what's the official side click i think is the official name here it is against a pilot g2 uh which many of you might be familiar with with a big click stick pen, and of course, a pen that I stole from a Hampton Inn. Sorry about that, Hampton Inn. Nonetheless, uh, so there we go. There's your size comparison. Next thing, what is this guy? Well, this is a sort of new iteration, new version, something along those lines, of the TIE Scribe Bolt 3.0. Um, I reviewed this pen actually not so long ago. This came out not so long ago but uh, they have done a brand new version of this, and it is currently in pre-order. At the time of filming this video, uh, they are taking pre-orders for it. I'm sure it'll become regularly available in a little while. I think they said October in the, 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 the website, but nonetheless, there is that. But they've made a couple of changes to it here. Um, they have basically replaced this top area here, which formerly had a cap, now with a, uh, a little, basically, sliding button. And so as a result, the pen gets shorter, the clip ends up riding higher relative to the top of the pen there, um, um, and it makes it a little bit deeper carry. And then more importantly, they have reduced the price of it, coming down from about 140 to about 100 bucks. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so the final versions that should come out of pre-order, I am told, are going to be pretty much identical to this one. And that's frankly a beautiful thing. And there are, as always, the two sizes roughly corresponding to uh, this size and this size. Uh, well, okay, this size, it exactly corresponds to this one and roughly in this, this other size range here. So um, those are going to be your options there. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your tie scribe go here. So to start with, I actually do appreciate the fact that they've got two sizes, right? Um, that, that, that's a beautiful thing, not only because different people like different sizes, but also because different people like different refills. The small one, uh, like this guy, takes a Parker-compatible refill. It's shipped to me with a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000, which is... Okay, um, you know, it's a fine uh, cartridge for somebody to ship you to, but you can also do like the Parker gels. Look, there are no shortage of Parker compatible cartridges, including space pen, things like that. Um, the full size, on the other hand, uh, takes a Pilot G2, a Pilot V5, Uniball 207, Schmidt 5888, a Hack Mont Blanc refill, and uh, you can also get a kit to make it Parker compatible, although if you go in Parker, just maybe go smaller. But either way, you've got a really nice variety of refills here, and you can really choose the bigger the small, depending on your needs. So that's great. They also have some options in terms of materials, right? This is their dark tie, uh, dark titanium uh, version here, but they also have, uh, which by the way is just titanium, processed a little differently. It's not like dark titanium is like titanium from an evil timeline. Not that we would be on the good timeline. Anyways, I digress. Um, nonetheless, they also have copper. They also have bronze. Uh, no word on dark copper or dark bronze, but who knows? Maybe it's coming down the road. But uh, it's nice to see different material options. It's also nice to see that, um, you know, Urban Survival Gear has done a lot of cool things where they're offering, like, for instance, a, uh, a clip that's a different uh, material, like a Timascus or a Mokutai. Do I have some Timascus around here? Uh, of course, I've got Timascus around here on it. Your reviewer. Anyways, this is an example of some time ask. It's just materials with different, uh, you know, things kind of made in there, right? Uh, kind of impregnated in the material, different grades of things. Um, but anyways, you can get different logo, or I'm sorry, get different uh, clips and tips and whatnot out of different materials, out of copper, bronze, etc. And you can swap those around. And actually, it turns out that uh, according to uh, Kelvin, the, uh, the, the version 3 uh, tips and clips both actually fit in the go as well. So if you've already bought an upgraded tip or a clip uh, for that, you can 
actually just use get one of these guys and uh, upgrade this guy too, which is a beautiful thing. That's that's great. Next thing, this is a pen that is more or less silent. Some of your uh, clicky pens uh, tend to be a little rattly, right? You get a tactical maraca feel to them, but this really doesn't, right? Um, I can shake this around. You really don't hear anything, right? The spring is strong enough, and then when you deploy it, um, you can do so. Here, I'll stop talking. You can do so silently. There's really no need for this thing to make any noise at all. It is very, very smooth, um, abundantly so, and frankly, maybe even a little bit smoother than the original with this new finish on there. Um, it is it is very, very quiet if you need it to be, and that's a beautiful thing. Speaking of the finish, this is a really cool finish, right? When I got this out of the box, my first uh, my first impression was like, oh, cool, is it like Cerakoted or something? But no, apparently this is being done by some neat tumbling process, and if he told me what it was, I'm sure he'd have to kill me, but nonetheless, it's interesting. Um, and as a result, it ends up looking a great deal darker than your normal titanium, than your normal kind of thing, you know, contrasting it here. And it actually contrasts all the more with the slightly polished uh, inserts there. It's just, it's a really nice look. I don't mind the original look, but this is cool to have around as an option, and I hope we have the availability of both of those guys. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, but it is not painted on there, even though it kind of looks like it. It looks uh, very different than a lot of... Frankly, I, I deal with a lot of titanium in my life, and this looks pretty different than most of it that I've seen, so that's kind of a beautiful thing. Next thing. This is featuring a shorter clip relative to the original V3. Uh, original V3, that doesn't even... Anyways, moving on. Uh, this has a slightly shorter clip, and the joy of that is actually going to be in the writing. Right? As you are using this, guys, you have this in your hand. Um, the longer clip, it's much easier for it to uh, kind of attack your thumb here, and especially for somebody who is maybe a lefty, although this is actually going to be one of the more lefty-friendly uh, bolt-action pens because, well, you... Uh, the, the bolt never actually gets in this area. It's not like you've got a clip and the bolt both fighting. But nonetheless, this is going to be even less likely to contact your hand and mess with your writing um, in a variety of situations and positions, which is absolutely a beautiful thing. Um, and it is also still a removable clip. Oh, you might be asking yourself, Nick, how the heck do you remove that? There's no external bolts like there were on the original TIE Scribe bolt. Um, there, there's nothing uh, on the top here because the top, you just have the logo. Um... The only thing that's really going on is, well, if you look inside, actually, that's where the joy comes. If we look deep inside this little doobie dude, uh, that's the technical term, of course, what you're going to see at the bottom there maybe is an Allen key hole. And in fact, if you take a, a tool of some variety, and I, I have a, the, the link to this ratchet set on uh, nickshabazz.com slash tools, there's your plug, and you take a 5 fourths hex key, and put it on the end of something along like this, or you take just a long hex key, and you slide it in there. What you can do, actually, is if you put it on a driver, that'll give you the opportunity to twist a little bit better, you can pull out the little set screw, Okay, or in this case, I actually didn't fully disengage it. But nonetheless, what you end up with then is the clip is able to just come out. The clip is just held in by that set screw, um, and then that leaves this little part out. You can see the set screw there down at the bottom of it. And then to put the bad boy back together, you just drop the clip back in. You just reach back in there with the tool and get it fully seated and secured. And then you just tighten a little bit. And now we're back to good, right? You might be asking yourself, Nick, why the heck would you do that? Well, A, if you want to replace the clip down the road with something a little bit fancier, you're going to need to take off the clip. But also, if you bend the clip mistakenly, um, if you are, for instance, carrying it and suddenly it catches on something and overbends the clip, one of the very best ways to do this is to, you know, flip it around and do that or just put the clip itself in a vise. Either way, it's a very nice thing that we have that opportunity. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's being made relatively easy um, is still a great thing. Next thing, this guy keeps all the refinements of the 3.0, or at least all the ones I really noticed, um, in that, you know, for instance, you get on the very top of this, this nice chamfer, and it's not only a chamfer, but you can actually see there's a little tiny bit of, I don't even know what to call it at this point, but like striation, not knurling, because it's not laved, either way, it's a, it's a thing, right, um, but there, there, there's this little bit of stair-steppy, which makes it real easy to get at this guy, which is great, it, you just get a really nice finish, you get... It's just, it, it is a very, very nicely done thing, and it really feels a lot like the 3.0 in that it feels like a very premium sort of product in a lot of ways, um, even though it looks a little bit more casual. Next thing, I gotta say, the button is a smart thing, right? Um, and is this really a button? Well, 
we'll talk about that in a bit here, but the fact that it has that on the top of there is very smart because basically what it allowed him to do is instead of having to have this extra cap on the top, this part just moves in. And so when the, you know, blade is, or blade, sorry guys, I've been reviewing knives today. Uh, when, when the pen is all the way in, you can see it's pretty nearly flush there. And so it just reduces the top of the, 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 the length of the top of the thing pretty substantially with really no loss at all. This was one of those things where I took it out of the package and took a look at it. It's like, oh, that's kind of brilliant, right? Um, Kelvin from USG has really got his head on right, so to speak. And so that's a great thing. And it also, like I said, it removes the need for having a cap on the top, which is one less threaded piece. Um, it removes the some of the height above the clip. So this guy now, if you keep it in your pocket, is only going to stick up this much uh, rather than sticking up this much, which is absolutely a beautiful thing for fold-over kind of pockets. And it also gives you the opportunity to be able to interact with that button directly and to use it, although we'll talk about that a little bit in a second here. But nonetheless, it's a very neat hack. And so to me, all of that is the good. The button is a very neat hack. It keeps all the refinements of the TieScribe 3.0. Um, it has a removable clip, if you've got a longish 5 to 60 fourths uh, screw there. Um, it has a uh, shorter clip than the prior version. Uh, it is completely silent with a cool finish on it. It has some accessory compatibility, lots of refill options in two different sizes. To me, though, what is really great about this uh, pen here is the iteration. And more importantly, it's not just iteration in that it's not just making the pen, in my opinion, a little bit better, but it's also making it cheaper, right? So Urban Survival Gear drops the V3. Um, which is a great pen. It is un uh, unquestionably a gem. It's very fancy, but it was also a price hike, right? It, it raised the price of the, the, this guy relative to 99 bucks. This guy went up to 140. So it's great. They earned the price by making it feel much more luxurious, but they, so they dropped this and then the community responded really well as they should. It's a really, really nice pen here. I'll use the similarly sized one here. But at the same time, then they turned around, uh, well, he, Kelvin, turned around and made a new version that addresses some of the complaints about V3 with the, the shorter height and things like that and is able to drop the price by 40 bucks. Now, you might be thinking, well, Nick, okay, cool, he improved some things, dropped the price, that's great. But what this is, what's really different here, what, what really impressed me is that this wasn't forced by the competition, right? Very often in the everyday carry space, price, high, or price drops or, or new features come about due to competition, but this is Urban Survival Gear competing with themselves, right? They are already cranking out something that is a gem, that is a very, very good pen, but they want it seems to make it better at better value, not because a competitor is forcing their hand, but because they can and because they want to go further ahead. This is a big refill energy move, and I have really deep respect for it, right? The fact that they're willing to not only make the product better, but they're willing to make the product cheaper and better at the same damn time is an absolutely wonderful thing, right? There are reasons you might prefer the aesthetics of the original, and I'm sure there are, these are still going to sell, but at the same time, that's really nice. And this is is something I respect a great deal, and it's why when Galvin reaches out to me and says, hey, you interested in checking out something new? The answer is just like, yes. So, you know, they may have to tell me what it is at this point, just like you're going to go do good work. So to me, what's great is that not only are we doing iteration to improve the product, but they're doing it unprompted, just competing with themselves and still bringing the value, which is absolutely great. Um, that, that, that's excellent. On the bad side, a couple of nitpicks. Um, the, the, the spring on this guy is still non-captive, which means if you are a pen disassembler, this spring can go rolling off in God only knows where, and that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. End of the world, no, but it is a thing. Um, next thing, the internal screw on this guy is certainly yet toable, uh, but you do need a tool uh, that will do that. You either need a relatively long Allen key, or you need something like this. I think, you know, a lot of people can probably find something along these lines to, to, to work with in their life, especially if they're in the the everyday carry world, but at the same time, um, it, it is definitely a little trickier to get to that than it is to get to you know, this little set screw on the top of this. So, not the end of the world, but it is definitely a thing. Um, the next thing, there is still quite a bit of height above the clip, right? Um, it is now equal to what it was in the version 2, but on the version 2, it was still a little high above the clip, right? And if you have a kind of shirt that has like a fold-over pocket, where the pocket comes along the top of it, that may be a little bit awkward, and it's a little even more awkward still in that, uh, you know, if the pocket pushes down on this, then the pen is actually going to deploy a little bit. It probably won't stay in there unless there's a strong rotational force, but at the same time, you know, you do want to keep that in mind. Um, and I would kind of like to see a world in which this top part gets cut down even a little bit further. I think that'd make it a little more compelling. But nonetheless, um, th th there is that. And then finally, kind of the weird thing about this is that it's a little counterintuitive as a pen person, because I took this out of the box and I clicked it. Nothing happened. 
This is not actually a clicky pen. By clicky pen, I mean something along these lines. Tactile turn side click here. When I click like this, the pen stays out when I, you know, I have to do something else to unclick it. But I think for a lot of people, if you hand them this pen, they are going to click the top of it, and then they're going to be like, what happened? Nothing happened. And in practice, you can open it with the button. You just have to have a lot of rotational force, right? If you do something like this, where you press the button down while spinning the pen, you can do that. Or entertainingly, if you really spank the pen, <laughs> it will come open. And so if you want to, maybe that's a power move, right? Like take your pen out in the meeting and bam, that's right, take it, pen. Um, but either way, uh, so it will only open by virtue of a rotational click or a good old-fashioned spank, uh, and, and but it's not going to open as normal. And so if you hand this to somebody, they're going to be a little weirded out. And so I wouldn't mind them see, you know, whip it up some kind of magic, which allows this guy to open naturally with a button press uh, down the road. But in practice, uh, at the very, very worst, it's the same as the, the action is the same. Not like I said, a little smoother as the prior version. It's just got a button at the top of it, right? So, um... To me, at least, that's what I don't love about it, is what's bad, is that it's not actually a click-top pen, even though it really looks like one, and that's going to confuse some people, myself included at first. Um, there's still a, a fair bit of height above the clip on this guy, although not the end of the world. The internal clip screw is a little tricky to get to. There is still a non-captive spring. On the ugly front, there's really nothing ugly here. So let's go to your conclusion, which is, well, you know... I know this is going to shock you, but it turns out that when you, um, when you, when you take a gem, when you take one of my very favorite pens and the version two here and you improve it, uh, and you create the version three, the version three is going to be a gem. And then it turns out that when you take something that is, uh, also one of my very favorite pens and then you improve it further and drop the price... Well, it turns out this guy's going to be a gem too, right? <laughs> By the transitive property, this thing is absolutely a freaking gem. What a shock! But nonetheless, I think this has very much earned it, right? Because with the two sizes, the refill options, the variety of metals, accessories, that kind of thing, um, the silent deployment and carry, a nice finish, a shorter clip, quality of life improvements that came with a 3.0 combined with the button hack and a $40 price increase while making this just a little bit more functional for daily life. Holy crap, is this good! Right, there are a couple of nitpicks. You'll need the longer tool for the set screw. There's still a little height above the clip relative to a lot of the competition, and it looks clicky, but really isn't. But honestly, I'm really impressed here. I was sitting, you know, writing this review. I was like, okay, what am I going to, what, what's bad here? Um, it, it was kind of at that level. I feel like I'm mostly nitpicking here and giving areas for improvement, but there's nothing freaking wrong with this. Honestly, I am super impressed, right? Partly just with the iteration, partly just with the value improvement, right? Um, but also, just with this thing in and of itself, if this were the very first product they released, it'd be like, damn, that's really good, right? Um, the biggest question that I think a bunch of people are going to ask me is, well, Nick, Nick, do I want to do version uh, the version 3 or do I want to do the Go? And the question, I think, is going to come down mostly to aesthetics. In terms of value and function, I think you're probably a little bit better off with the Go just because it's 40 bucks less, right? That's not nothing. Um, but the thing is, and I also, I, I got to say, I do prefer that uh, reduced height at the top there and, you know, there's nothing at all worse about the, the Go. Um, the, but I think there is some aesthetic difference that might make some folks prefer the V3. That might make, you know, this feels a little bit more boardroom. This feels a little bit more job site. Not that either one is particularly ill-suited to either side, right? And I can kind of imagine them leaning a little bit into this and, you know, making more reflective versions, making this look a little bit fancier. And then continuing this as it is. I, I, I kind of feel like both of these are really great pens. Right? I like this guy a lot. I like this guy even more, but still. Both are great pens. You're just going to have to look at the aesthetic and look at the value proposition and decide which one is going to make most sense to you. Um, there's not really a wrong answer. It's just kind of a matter of taste here. That said, if I were going to be buying a bunch of these for friends and family, I would probably end up doing the go um, because of the value and because, well, my friends and family aren't that freaking fancy. But more importantly, I think this does fill a gap. You know, in my, my review of the, the, the version 3, I remember saying something along the lines of, you know, going from the version 2, which felt in a lot of ways a little bit less fancy, a little a little bit less pretentious to the version 3, which feels much more fancy, executive, pretentious. It, not only was there a gap in the price range going immediately from 100 to 140, but also there, there there's a little bit of an aesthetic difference. And I think this really fills in that blank. Right? Uh, this is, uh, given, again, this is the shorter version, but this is the spiritual successor to the original, both in terms of price point and in terms of overall aesthetic, and allows the V3 to be something sort of entirely different, right? Uh, I, 
appreciate that very much. And there's really no reason, if you're holding onto a V2 and you're thinking, maybe I want a different pen, there's really no reason not to go with this one. I, th I feel like they're, 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 they're both great, but this, this is a major improvement over that. But anyways, uh, uh, final conclusion, though, this is absolutely a gem. And in fact, it is a polished version of a polished version of a gem, right? Um, and it is something that Urban Survival Gear probably didn't need to do, but which I'm really glad they did. I absolutely love seeing this kind of iteration, and it is absolutely a beautiful thing. So I, I feel like I'm just heaping on the praise, but when you make something great better, it's just like, what do you what do you freaking think is going to happen? It's going to be good. So well done, Kelvin and Urban Survival Gear. Keep up the good work and, and keep up the crazy iteration. I can't wait to see what you end up coming up with next. And uh, to all the rest of you, if you're liking the look of these guys, if you're liking the look of this guy, then I think you should, uh, Ty Scribe, go ahead and pick one of these guys up. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. I gotta go. Uh, bye.